Isn't the name of Jesus wonderful? Isn't the name of Jesus wonderful? All the world can come to him and have their sins removed. Isn't the name of Jesus wonderful? So wonderful Isn't the name of Jesus beautiful Isn't the name of Jesus beautiful Son of God and one of us Lover of our souls Isn't the name Amen. 
Well, happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there. And for those of you that are celebrating Mother's Day with your mom, you're incredibly blessed. I pray that you're enjoying this opportunity to be with her. And if you didn't get your mom anything for Mother's Day, let me just say, shame on you. You've had 364 days to be prepared for Mother's Day because every year it comes at the same time of the year. So make plans now. Don't be a slacker. Be prepared for next year when Mother's Day rolls around. Today is going to be totally different. For the last several months, we have been in the Unbelievable Faith series, and we have looked at story after story of characters from the Bible that had unbelievable faith. And in the midst of all of this, we've been talking about how our faith in some ways has been tested during the COVID-19. Certainly, as the pressers like to say, these are unprecedented times. I think I've heard that term more in the last two months than probably my whole life combined. But we truly are living in unprecedented times. And it was so good for me this past Wednesday to get to share with you all about our plans for reopening Lake Bowen Baptist Church. Now we're still a few weeks out. So next Sunday, we're going to be online once again. But then beginning on May the 23rd, Saturday night at seven o'clock. And then on Sunday, May the 24th at 8.30 and 10.30, we're going to be back in the house at Lake Bowen Baptist Church. So we want to give you every opportunity and avenue to continue to worship the Lord as the Lord leads you. We understand that some people will not feel comfortable coming back into a group gathering. Certainly these groups are going to be nowhere near as large as they used to be. We're going to have it set up to where our main worship center will be the main area where we'll gather together on these times of worship. But then the overflow worship area will be set up and if we have a very large number that turn out for one of the services, the gymnasium is also going to be set up. So we're going to make preparations to accommodate as many people as we can that want to come either on Saturday nights or on Sunday mornings. But we're also going to continue to put services online. Now, up until now, all of our Sunday morning services have been at 10 o'clock. But beginning on Sunday, May the 24th, we'll be posting at 1030. So if you're at home and you're unable to come, you can continue to worship with the body of Christ that gathered together at Lake Bowen Baptist Church. While we're having a live worship service here at the 404, you can continue to worship there in your home. We understand some of you have an immune compromised system and you're not going to feel comfortable getting back into a crowd, even a smaller crowd than what we're used to. So moving forward, once we get to this point, our plan is that beginning on Saturday night, May the 23rd, and every Saturday night following thereafter, and on Sunday morning, May 24th, and every Sunday morning following thereafter, we'll have a 7 o'clock Saturday night service, Sunday morning, 8.30, and also Sunday morning at 10.30 with a 10.30 service being posted online. Now, again, you noticed I probably used the word moving forward. Ultimately, we have no idea what the future holds for us, but praise the Lord, we know who holds the future. The old song we used to sing that I've talked about before, many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand. Even in the midst of these unprecedented times that we've been living in, our God has not been moved one iota. He is still on the throne. He is still in control and he is still using everything in our life to truly work together for our good. The hardships that we faced for the last two months, the uncertainty of what the next two months are going to look like. God has the ability to take all of these things and work them together for our good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. That's the caveat. A lot of people want to quote the first part of Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good, but they forget about the second part, which says for those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Well, I mentioned to you that this morning service is going to look totally different. And the reason why is we're not going to be in the Unbelievable Faith series. We'll pick that back up next Sunday. But today I wanted to talk to you just from my heart. If you want to take your Bible, turn to Psalm chapter 122. As we have been going through this season, as we've been going through this time in our life, in the life of our church, there's been a, a yearning within many of your hearts to gather back together again. Many of you were so excited last Wednesday night when I mentioned what our new schedule was going to be. I mean, even from the, the drive-in services that we're going to have on Wednesday nights moving forward and the different things that the youth are planning and they're going to be doing, all of these things are building this excitement within the body. The Word of God tells us how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. And and it truly is a blessing when the brethren can dwell together in unity, when we can have biblical community one with another. It's been great having biblical community in our homes. It's been great having biblical community through Zoom calls and Microsoft team calls and conference calls. All of these things have been great, but there's no replacement for actually being together for actually coming into the house of the Lord with an anticipation, with a praise on our lips, with a thankfulness within our heart. And so what I want us to do this morning, we're going to look at four different passages of Scripture. They're very short. They're only one or two verses apiece, so don't, don't get excited. 
But in Psalm chapter 122, verse number one, this is probably one of the most familiar passages of Scripture that you will hear me and other pastors say repeatedly when we think about coming to worship the Lord. The psalmist David said this, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There's just something about going into the house of the Lord. Now, we understand we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The 404 Sugar Ridge Road is not the, the temple where the Holy Spirit dwells. When you and I come together, whenever two or three are gathered together in His name, He is in our midst. So whether it be 200 or 2,000 or just two or three that gather together, the Holy Spirit of God is in our midst and we have the opportunity to worship together. But when we think about the house of the Lord, oftentimes what we think about is we think about church. We think about the church we grew up in. We think about the church that we may have been married in. And then we ultimately, at this time and season, we think about the church location where the body gathers together. And for you and I, Lake Bowen Baptist Church, this is our church. This is what we would say is our house of the Lord. And when David lays out this psalm of praise, look at what he says, I was glad. I'm sure there are a lot of you that are really glad that we're getting to the point of coming back together again, even though it's not going to be the same, even though some of you are going to come at different times. And, and over the next several weeks, when we begin meeting in house again, you're going to start noticing that some of the familiar faces that you used to enjoy seeing week after week, you may not get to see them as much because they may be going to a different service than you're going to. They may be serving at the service you're attending, so you may see them out in the foyer or you may see them uh, helping to clean after the service on Sunday mornings, but it'll be a different dynamic. But there will still be this anticipation in your heart of this gladness about going into the house of the Lord. David was very specific about where his joy came from. His joy came from the Lord. Ultimately, the, the joy of the Lord is our strength as we've gone through these hard times. It's the joy of the Lord that has carried us through these times. But David says, I was glad when they said to me, it was personal. Now that video I put out on Wednesday night, you know, it was, it was out there for everybody to see. But for some of you, when you heard that message, it was as if I was speaking directly to you, that I was saying to you, hey, we're getting ready to gather back together again at the 404. And there was this gladness that dwelt up within among you when that message came, let us go into the house of the Lord. There's just nothing that replaces the fellowship of the body of believers when they come together. I've said it before that Lake Bowen Baptist Church is probably one of the best churches in the upstate of South Carolina. And then I went a little bit further and said, and maybe in the world, I don't know. All I know is that what God is doing at Lake Bowen Baptist Church truly is special. His hand of blessing has been upon us for almost three years. This is the time of year almost three years ago when I got that call from the pulpit committee that they wanted to meet to, to have a time of Q&A and to ask me questions. And I, and I remember they kind of stacked the deck against me now and I'm thinking about it. The first time I met with the full pulpit search team, they had me go to Nana Faye Bridges' house. Now you want to talk about unlevel playing field. I mean, I've known Nana Faye my whole life. And now they're going to bring me into this setting in the, in a home that I had visited in, that I had been with this family. They have the Corns and the Maccabees and the Bridges have known me almost my entire life. And they bring me into Nana Faye's house. I think they had an idea of what they were doing. But anyway, it was about this time three years ago. And then the process of everything that's taken place on that first Sunday in August when I got to become your pastor, it has been an incredible journey. And there has not been a Sunday over the past two and a half plus years that I have ever begrudged going into the house of the Lord. I look forward to Sunday mornings, to getting up and to coming to this place of worship and gathering together with the body. And I want to tell you something, as, as much as I hate it that some of you aren't going to get to see each other because we're going to be spread out over three different services over the weekend, I'm really excited about it. I think we're going to have a much intimate time than we've ever had before. There's going to be a connectivity that takes place with those that are at the 7 o'clock Saturday night service or the 8.30 or the 10.30 Sunday morning service. There's going to be that connection that takes place because those that are going to come have that anticipation in their heart. There's this gladness that, hey, we're going to this service and, hey, we're going to go serve at this service. So David understood this all too well. That when he was given the word, let us go to the house of the Lord, he took it personal and he was excited about it. Now, if you're there in Psalm chapter 122, you don't have to go very far to the next passage. It's over in Psalm chapter 127. Psalm chapter 122 is from David. Psalm chapter 127 is from his son Solomon. 
If you know the story of David and his son Solomon, David was one of the greatest kings that the nation of Israel ever had. And then he was followed by his son Solomon, who is equated as being one of the wisest men that ever lived. And we would look at Solomon and we could look at the Song of Solomon and Ecclesiastes and a lot of different passages of Scripture. And we look at Proverbs and we gain all of this wisdom from the Word of God. But when Solomon writes these words in Psalms 27, verse number 1, he makes this statement, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless what is taking place at 404 Sugar Ridge Road truly is a movement of God, then what we're doing truly is in vain. If what we are trying to accomplish through delivering the gospel, discipling the Christian, and deploying the Christ follower is not in line with the will of God for the ministry of this church, then the reason why we're doing it is completely wrong. We're not doing it so that we can have large crowds. The COVID-19 has already taken that off the plate. Nobody is going to be able to boastlessly proclaim, hey, we had a thousand people in a service because mathematically that's not even going to be possible. Churches that once boasted of having thousands and tens of thousands of people with social distancing, their numbers are going to be taken away. The things that they were building their pride and their ministry on, all of those things are going to be taken away because unless the Lord builds builds the house, unless the Lord is building the ministry of any church, not just Lake Bourne Baptist Church, not the men's ministry, the women's ministry, the youth ministry, the children's ministry, not any individual ministry of Lake Bourne Baptist Church, but unless the Lord truly builds the house, those who labor are laboring in vain. Folks, you saw it Wednesday night. We've laid out a plan that, that carries us through the month of May. It's about a three-week plan for Wednesday nights, for Tuesday nights, for Saturday nights, Sunday mornings. All these different things are laid out. And we understand that when God began to impress upon our heart that we were getting to the point that we could once again gather together again, that we had to take everything into a full, total picture of reality. That if we were going to have services, we were going to have to make provisions for the church to be cleaned. And if we were going to have multiple services on the same morning, that we would need volunteers to step up to help make sure everything is clean and sanitized for the next group. And that's where you as a church body truly come in. Hey, if you were excited when I read that passage, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Guess what? We're going to need you to help labor to make it possible. You've heard me say it for years, a need known is an opportunity given. There over the next two weeks, there are going to be needs and opportunities that are going to be made aware to you. We have celebrated the unbelievable ministry of our food bank ministry that went from seeing just a few dozen families a month to celebrating over a hundred different families coming in week after week as you as a church family provided not only financial gifts, but also food donations to help meet the needs of people in our community. That was a need that was made known to so many of you, and you saw it is an opportunity that was given to you to be a part of it, to help build the ministry of what's taking place here at Lake Bowen Baptist Church. Solomon, in his wisdom, he says, unless the Lord builds it, the people that are building are building it in vain. Unless the Lord builds the house, then those who labor are laboring in vain. Look at what he goes on in the rest of verse number one. He says, unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It's one thing to watch, it's one thing to look, it's one thing to anticipate, but it's another thing to have the Lord truly watching over you. When Solomon writes this, he's talking about a city and he's talking about those that are watching for enemies to come in to attack. And he says, unless the, the Lord is truly watching over the city, then the watchman is watching in vain. Ultimately, what can a watchman do against the enemy? Very little. But when the Lord is truly watching over a group of people, then that becomes so much more. See, as your pastor for the last two months, I have prayed over this church family. I have wept over what we have had to go through, the, the loss of loved ones, the hardship of people losing their jobs, all of these things that have taken place. And as your pastor, it has grieved my heart to see how many of you have suffered through this time. And I know that the reality of it is us being able to get back together in a few weeks and to, to gather together in a building, that's not going to take any of that away. But some of you have shared with me that there's this excitement that's there. That this separation that is taking place, that, that you feel this stirring, that God is going to really encourage you when we get back together again. So as your pastor, I want you to know that in a lot of ways, I've felt the same way some of you have felt. My heart has grieved. My spirit has been troubled. As I look at what God is doing through the COVID-19 and how for many people we have looked at it and said, this is a wake-up call for the church. Yet so many churches have not woke up. How we have looked at this and said, what if this is God's judgment to try to get the church to understand that he's stirring and moving, yet so many have not been stirred, so many have not been moved. This past week, we celebrated a national day of prayer on Thursday, but there was another event that took place on Tuesday. It was called Prayer on the Mountain. 
A lot of you probably have not even heard about this movement that took place because it didn't get a lot of fanfare. It's not a national movement that is taking place. But as we were on that call, we got word that 260,000 people were on that call at one time. This prayer on the mountain, up in the mountains of North Carolina, that as we were on that call, a pastor from South Korea, from Seoul, Korea, had sent a message to one of the pastors that they had a broadcast that was going out to over a million people. As our nation, our leaders were coming together, social distances did not mean anything. Geographical distances did not mean anything. But we prayed, and we prayed for God to be a, bring about a revival in our country, to bring about a revival in our church so many times when we think about revival, we think about a, a tent crusade. We think about having an evangelist come in. But that's not what revival is, my friend. Revival is when the people of God get serious about their walk and their relationship with God. And so many people have looked at COVID-19 and said, maybe this is what God is using to bring about the next great revival to where people can't play church anymore because they can't go to church, to where people can't put on fake faces when they see people, but they've got to be real with people when they see them. Let me ask you this question right now. If, if you were to, to say, all right, now in two weeks, we're going to gather back together to church, but I sure do hope that person's not in the service I attend. My friend, that should be an indictment in your heart. The Holy Spirit of God should convict you about that. That when you think about coming together with the body of believers at Lake Bowen Baptist Church, if there's a face that pops into your mind, that you say, I hope they go to a different service than I go to. I hope they don't serve at the service that I'm attending. My friend, that's the Holy Spirit convicting you about a need for revival in your life. How good and how pleasant it is when the brethren dwell together in unity was how we began our time. And we talked about this, that we must have that heart condition that is postured to where we can truly worship the Lord, that we must have that ability to truly worship Him and to not have anything that would hinder our worship. I encourage you to examine your heart. We're just a few weeks out, but even now, as I've just said these words to you, if that face has popped into your mind and that name has come to your thought process, examine your heart. See if there be any wicked way within you because if you come to 404 Sugar Ridge Road in just a few weeks and you have not reconciled and dealt with that bitterness or that spirit of, of disunity that's in your heart, then you will not worship Him in fullness because you must worship Him in spirit and in truth. This is the words of Jesus we're going to look at in just a few moments. But I want to give you one more psalm right there close to where you're at. Psalms 128. This is a psalm from a psalmist that is not named. Many of the psalms are a psalm of David, a psalm of Solomon. But this is just a psalmist. Listen to what he says in verse number 1. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. The Word of God tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This psalmist just wrote that blessed are those who fear the Lord, who walk in His ways. To not walk in our flesh, to not walk in our spirits of, of what we desire and what we want, but to truly walk in the ways of the Lord. How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to his word. What did the psalmist say? Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It is the word of God that teaches us how to truly fear the Lord. He says that this, he says, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. Then he drops down in verse number four. He says, behold, thus the man will be blessed who fears the Lord. My friend, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, if you truly have an honoring fear of the Lord, a holy fear of a holy God, then you will be blessed because your spirit will be ruled by the Holy Spirit of God. You will not be ruled by your emotions. You will not be caught up in the things that can distract us from what true worship is. Jesus, as he encounters the woman at the well over in John chapter 4, if you want to go ahead and turn your way there, he has this interesting discussion with this woman about worship. Because of her background, because of the people group that she was from, they had this belief that, that they must worship in this location. Her knowing that Jesus was a Jew, she said, well, you in your people, you say you must worship in this location. And as Jesus continues to have this conversation with Jesus, over in, uh, with this woman, in John chapter 4, verse number 22, he makes this statement, you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. 
The time has come for us to understand what worship truly is. Worship is not about a personality. Worship is not about a music preference. Worship is not about environmental projection. Worship is not about video technology. Worship is about spirit and truth. In Jesus' day and age, none of the things that we equate with worship now, excellent musicians, excellent vocalists, excellent presentations, none of those things equated what worship was. Jesus looks at this woman and says, you need to understand what worship is. As excited as we are about coming back together at 404 Sugar Ridge Road, our worship is not predicated by the location in which we gather together. Folks, I said this a couple of weeks ago. If you've been sitting for the last several weeks and you said, well, I can't wait to get back to the church so I can start worshiping the Lord again, you've really been missing out. These last few weeks, and we've had home church in our home, and we've had different people that have come in and different family members that have been there. It has been an incredible time of worship as we have sang together, as we have bowed our heads in prayer, as we have listened from the message, either from myself or Pastor Mike or Pastor Zach. And then we've had that time of discussion after the sermon about different topics that we could talk about from the sermon that day. There has been this incredible sense of worship right there in our home. Our worship is not predicated by where we are located And Jesus lays it out beautifully. And He says to her this in verse number 22, you worship what you do not know. People that worship a location, people that worship a personality, people that worship a style, they're not truly worshiping. They have made something into something it was never created to be. Our building was created for us to gather together, to be a house of prayer, to be a house of God that we can gather together. Our music was not created to be what detracts us from true worship. Different personalities were not put in place in leadership to detract us from our focus of worship truly being on the Father. And he looks at her and he says, ma'am, you've got it all wrong. You don't even know what you're truly worshiping. Verse number 23, he says, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. What does it mean to truly worship God in spirit and in truth? Well, the spirit that we worship in is the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is not emotionalism. The Spirit is not based on feelings, though we can be caught up in the Spirit and we can have an emotional time and we can weep and we can get excited and you can get those holy goosebumps standing in line and it can bless your heart as you bless the Lord. But when we worship the Lord, it must be geared and driven by the Holy Spirit of God. He must be the focus of our worship. He must be the one that we set our hearts upon as we worship Him in spirit and then we worship Him in truth. Well, where do we find truth? Truth is found in the Word of God. Truth is found in the Holy Spirit's lead, guiding, and directing our life. So when Jesus looks at that woman at the well, she says, look, the the ones that truly worship Him are worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. And then He makes this statement, for the Father is seeking such to worship Him. That's truly who the Father is looking for. The Father is not looking for people with checklist Christianity that say, well, I went to church online, check. Well, I went to a Bible study drive-in, check. Well, I went to a Saturday night or a Sunday morning service, check. Well, I dropped a check in the mail. Well, I helped serve at a food pantry. None of those things equate what true worship is because when we are being led by the Holy Spirit, we can do all of those things and truly worship Him. We don't do any of those things for people to look at us, for people to to pat us on the back, but we truly worship Him in spirit and in truth because those are who the Father is looking for. He's not looking for those that pledge their allegiance to a name of a church. We've got some tremendous churches in our area, but ultimately that's not who God's looking for. He's looking for those that it does not matter which church they attend. They understand that they are a part of the big C church, that they're a part of the family of God, and they truly worship Him in spirit And in truth, verse number 24, it says that the reason is is because God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. God is three in one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that came to indwell your heart and life the day that you accepted Christ as your Savior is the Holy Spirit of God that leads you to truly worship Him. You've heard it said before that you could, you could take an old boy that, that can't even carry a tune in a bucket, but if his heart's right, he'll lead other people to worship. Often you can always look at people and say, well, he's such an eloquent speaker, he could be used in a great way. But you could take somebody that may fumble and stumble over their words, and if the Holy Spirit of God is in it, then there'll be people that'll be drawn to the message he's preaching. See, the reality of it is it's never about the vessel. It's always about what gets poured out of the vessel. It's always about the spirit that is contained within the vessel. It's always about the spirit that is leading someone to truly worship Him. 
That it doesn't matter if it's online in your home. It doesn't matter if it's in a drive-in service. It doesn't matter if it's here at a physical location. But when we come together to truly worship Him, we become part of those that the Lord is truly looking for. Now look, moms, I know that today's Mother's Day and we're celebrating you. But there's no child out there that truly worships their mother. Now, they may think that they're the greatest mom in the world, and, and you've probably seen people who say, and you, some of you moms, you may have got a card for Mother's Day that say, to the greatest mom in the world, and to your child, you are. But as great as the love is that they show you, the gifts they may give you, the meal they may feed you, whatever it may be, none of those things are acts of worship. They're acts of appreciation. When we give our offerings and our tithes, those are acts of appreciation and acts of worship. We understand that every good and perfect gift we have comes from the Father. So we willingly give back a portion of it to the ministry. And the Holy Spirit leads us to do that. Nobody in this day and age under the COVID-19 pandemic that we're in with people losing their jobs, with people with uncertainty, all these different things, with the stock market going up and down, all of these things, nobody on their own flesh is going to willingly continue to give to a ministry of a church. But can I tell you that over the last two months, the faithful giving of Lake Bourne Baptist Church has been incredible. Every month we have exceeded budget needs. We have exceeded expense needs to the point that I shared with you last month, we got to bless two pastors with a financial blessing. This month we're looking at blessing a church with a financial blessing. Why? Because God has blessed Lake Bourne Baptist Church through the faithful giving of the people because they understand that when they give, it is an act of worship. There's truth in their worship. There's a spirit of giving that is found in this body. I'm so excited that we're just a few weeks away from getting back together again. And as we celebrate moms on Mother's Day, moms, I hope you have a great day. But I hope that in reality that what you've really celebrated more than anything else is the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And every day is the Lord's day when you think about it. I mean, if every morning His mercies are fresh and new, and if every day is a gift from God, then every day truly is the Lord's day. So as you celebrate moms, and some are with you, and some have gone on to be with the Lord, celebrate the faith that they have. Take time to truly worship the Lord during this time. Give Him thanks for the gift of your family. Give Him thanks for the gifts of health. Give Him thanks for the gift of just another day. And give Him thanks for the gift that one day soon, we're going to be gathering back together here at the 404. Let's take time to pray together. Heavenly Father, as we have looked at Your Word, my desire has been that Your Holy Spirit would truly lead God and direct us. That we would keep everything in perspective. That we would acknowledge that You are the giver of every good and perfect gift. And that we would see that You truly do have Your hand upon this church family. And that we would seek to honor You and to truly worship You in spirit and in truth. Father, we're excited about what's going to come in a few weeks but we're more excited about what you're doing even now. So Father, will you take this time? Will you use it to encourage our lives and help us to be faithful to you in the days to come? For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Well, today's questions are going to be different. This whole sermon has been a little bit different, but this is what I want you to do. If your mom is still living, I want you to think about something that you're truly thankful for when you think about your mom, and then I want you to let her know. She may be there with you or you may want to pick up the phone and give her a call. Secondly, you may be one of those whose mother is no longer with them, but you have a tremendous blessing in your mom. I want you to take time just to thank God. And if you've got people there with you, share one of the things that you're most thankful for about your mom. Now, the second part of this is thinking about the message from today. This is what I want to encourage you to do if you're still watching online as this is taking place. In the comment section, I want you to put a comment. What is the one thing you're looking forward to the most about coming back together at the 404? And then secondly, what is one way that you think you'll be able to serve when that time comes? Now, obviously not everybody's going to be able to comment, but we want to encourage you to share about what you're excited about when you think about coming back to Lake Bourne Baptist Church. And if there's an area that you want to help serve in, I want to remind you there's an online survey with some questions, just 11 questions. It'll take you less than three minutes. It's found on Facebook. I want to encourage you to do that survey to help us have a better idea of how we can serve you when the time comes for us to gather back together again. God bless you. Pray you have a blessed day.